Neither Better Trades or any of its personnel are registered broker dealers or investment advisors. I will mention that I consider certain securities or positions to be good candidates for the types of strategies we are discussing or illustrating. Because I consider the securities or positions appropriate to the discussion or for illustration purposes does not mean that I'm telling you to trade the strategies or securities. Keep in mind that we are not providing you with recommendations or personalized advice about your trading activities. The information we are providing is not tailored to any particular individual. Any mention of a particular security is not a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold that or any other security or a suggestion that it is suitable for any specific person. Keep in mind that all trading involves a risk of loss and this will always be the situation regardless of whether we are discussing strategies that are intended to limit risk. Also, Better Trades personnel are not subject to trading restrictions. I and others at Better Trades could have a position in a security or initiate a position in a security at any time. Hello and welcome out to the Insights. We're going to do a quick update of the markets. Um, look at big guys and also look at little guys that have popped up uh, yesterday and today and given us some possible opportunities for the rest of the week and early next week. So, But before that, we'll start off like usual. And uh, this is one that just happened to hit me uh, for one very specific reason. But the quote is, uh, and, and John Asaraf has lots of really good ones. Uh, My life is full of purpose and exciting changes. Uh, the part that hit me the most was the exciting changes. And sometimes they are exciting that come out of not necessarily good things. I uh, had a huge, huge serving of humble pie this weekend, uh, to put it mildly. Um, and sometimes things happen in life that open our eyes, and we have to step back and take a very serious look at what we're doing and how we're doing things. And if they're keeping us on the path of where we want to be, where we want to go. And I won't get into it um, because it is. I mean, uh, it's been a personal issue, and it is a personal issue, and it's one of those things. I've shared some things here personal that, and some things I don't mind. There are some things that just don't. But uh, reality is that trade is the same way, right? I mean, we experience that in trading. I mean, I've been there. I've blown up a couple accounts years ago when I first started. And that's a humbling experience, you know, to take, albeit they were, it was a small account. Both of them were, you know, I was just getting started. I didn't have a lot of money. I was young. I was dumb and still trying to dig out of debt. And, uh, you know, you you make mistakes and all of a sudden there's nothing left or you sit there for two weeks and watch an option expire and you just, it's like you're frozen. You can't do anything about it. And then all of a sudden you realize there's not enough money in your account to trade with. You can't do anything, period. I mean, it's gone. And it is a serious whack upside the head. And, uh, you know, it happens in trading and it happens in life. And quite frankly, one of the beauties and one of the reasons I am so blessed to have been introduced to and exposed to the market and exposed to trading is the lessons that I've learned from the market that help me, uh, that I translate into normal life. And the lessons that I've learned from trading, being whacked upside the head, dozens if not hundreds of times over the years um, and including some of them extremely difficult to deal with and having to accept the fact that I blew up an account it's hard to deal with uh, mentally emotionally and it's challenging to come back from that because when you come back and you try to go again it's hard to pull the trigger sometimes because that fear is so deep and so the beauty of trading is not only do we learn a lot of lessons with respect to trading, but we learn a lot of lessons that can be used in life. And the lessons I've learned from trading and blowing up accounts and being humbled, um, I mean, in the midst of, I mean, literally just coming off the weekend and having, you know, being whacked upside the head, it helps me to deal with it in a lot better way on a personal level. So uh, exciting changes. Yeah, I have some changes to make. And to me, it's exciting. Even though, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to accept what you hear and what happens. But the changes that come from it are the exciting part. And it also helps to realize that we do have a purpose here on Earth. Some of us have a huge purpose. Some of us have maybe a smaller purpose. But the beauty is, is that the small ones are just as significant as the big ones. There really is no difference. Just like it doesn't matter if you're trading with a $1,000 account or a $2 million account. Trading is trading. Living is living and a purpose is a purpose. And even though yours might seem, you might think it's a small purpose, the reality is that there could be somewhere along the line that 
you don't recognize, or maybe you're not even here to realize that the purpose that you were put here for was big. It could be that you did something small in somebody's life along the way that you don't even recognize and realize, but you made a significant difference in their life by doing something small. And they go on to do something big because of your something small. So even though your purpose may have been small, in reality, that ripple effect took place and it created something big. So don't ever discount the purpose that you were put here for. Don't ever think that it's small because it's not. Every purpose we have is big. And if we minimize it and we make it smaller, shame on us. So let's go make some exciting changes and take a look and see what has been happening. And whoops, well, there's some <laughs> exciting stuff. That is, um, I don't think I've shown this. That's my grandma and then my kids. So that's my kids with their great grandma. She doesn't like to be referred to as great grandma. She just wants to be called grandma. Um, so, but we are blessed to have her. Um, she is 93 years old. This was just about, that was October 9th, actually. No, October 10th is when that picture was taken. Just, I mean, a month and a half ago. She's 93 years old. Still lives on her own, still drives. She's active. She's out playing cards with her friends all the time. Smart as a whip. Um, and it's just crazy. We almost lost her. Actually, it's been almost exactly two years ago. We we thought we lost her. In fact, she thought it was um, it was the end. She had colon cancer. And they were going to do the surgery. And during all the pre-prep, they found a big, giant uh, clot, blood clot in her leg, about a foot long. Huge thing. And they said, well, we can't do the surgery, you know, with that blood clot there because it will certainly kill you. And so the only thing, the only option we have is to go in and, you know, do surgery and take the blood clot out. But then you have to do recuperate from that and then have the colon surgery. And uh, at 91, at that time, she was 91. And, you know, just surgery period at 91 is risky. You know, just the anesthesia alone is is risky. And uh, she decided to say, hey, go for it. I mean, what are we going to do? You can sit here and die or you can try the surgery and see if it works. I mean, <laughs> but we had accepted the fact and we pretty much said our goodbyes. And it was hard walking out of there not knowing that we'd ever see her again. And, uh, heck, they went in and took the the clot out, and everything went smoothly on that one. She came out of it just fine, and three or four days later, I think it was, they went and did the colon surgery and got that all. And two or three weeks later, she was at home. You know, she was in a hospital north of, of Roseburg outside of our small town. And uh, I don't know, yeah, I think it was two or three weeks later, she was home, started physical therapy, and within two or three or four months, she was uh, driving again. Basically out on her own. She was living on her own anyway. She needed a little bit of help at the time, but now she's she's doing just fine. So uh, it's kind of crazy, kind of crazy, but uh, very blessed to have her. She is an amazing, amazing woman. So uh, tons of wisdom. You know, I mean, at 93, being born in, uh, was it 1922, I think? Yeah, she's seen a lot. Of, talk about exciting changes. She's seen a lot of exciting changes in her life. And uh, so anyway. In fact, we're going to see her on Friday. I'm looking forward to that, actually. I knew there was something I was thinking, but... Okay, getting to the market. Off of the other stuff. Uh, SPX was down quite a bit this morning. I don't know. I think it was 15 or 18 points when I saw it. I don't know what it ended up being total, but just looking at it intraday and peeking at it, uh, it was down a bunch. I thought, well, here we go. You know, maybe we're going to have a, a downswing, and by the end of the day, boom, we're up. So only a few points, you know, which leaves us kind of a hangman. It's not exactly technically a hangman, but it's pretty darn close, so... Uh, we'll see. Volume hasn't been updated yet. I don't have the total end of day uh, done yet, but most of the other markets look the same. NASDAQ, very similar. Industrials, basically the same. The transports and the Russell are the two that have been diverging, essentially. So, And the transports, as you can see, uh, still down quite a bit. I mean, 51 points for the day, uh, and it was down a bunch during the day, um, down quite a bit yesterday. So we're still basically very neutral on the transports. Slightly bullish on the other markets, but very neutral on the transports as of right now. The Russell, uh, actually a little bit bullish. It was up most of the day. So um, not sure that the volume is going to change on that. On the Russell, I think a lot of times the intraday updates, we get a pretty accurate cut on the Russell. But we'll see. If the volume is different than that, then that may change things. But light volume with updates, you know, not terribly exciting. The bulls aren't excited about this thing at all. So uh, look at the VIX, pretty much nothing there. So... Getting over to, and you know what, I'm just going to go through the little guys since we're here. There's only eight that really popped up this week that were uh, looked decent. So and ABX, three of them are rollovers. ABX is this one, a gold stock that, uh, in fact, gold and oil, both of those commodities 
are starting to show some signs of wanting to reverse. Um, basically, you can see here we're building kind of a little base. But then again, it's, you know, it's is it just a base or is it just a, a several month um, relaxation point? Because when you look at, whoops, I mean, this thing has been just destroyed. I mean, that's a weekly chart right there. Let's get all, let's see how much more we can get. And you can see all, basically, throughout the 90s, the stock really didn't go very far because gold was stable, everything was good, so the stock didn't do much. And then in 06, 07, 08, the panic of the market, gold was bullish, went screaming higher, then boom, gold stocks got hammered. And then 09, you know, when the market crashed, it went right along with it. And then in 09, it climbed way back up. I mean, ABX is all the way up at 52 bucks. And then we've got that big dance. We've got kind of a head and shoulders diamond type of pattern right there, which formed that top. And then right here, 012, March of 012, it just started to tumble. And it essentially crashed. I mean, we're down at, this thing was a $52 stock just, what, three years ago? Four years ago or so? Yeah, about four years ago. And today it's a $7 stock. I mean, that's what, 90%? More than that. I don't know, whatever it is, it's a lot. And the question becomes let's go to a monthly, you can see, I mean, the all time lows. Well, the starting price is 35 cents. That's, but you know, you got some lows down here about three bucks. It very easily could get all the way down there. So that becomes the question. And when you go back and look at this, you see, you know, back here in 2013, I remember having a conversation with a guy, and oil looks very similar. It got hammered, 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 and then it started to stabilize a little bit. And then boom, we have another leg to the downside. Then it looks like it's built a bottom, another leg to the downside. So the question is, is this just another stair step to another leg to the downside? Or are we actually building a base? Because we've tried it here a couple times, and obviously people didn't think it was good enough. So um, right now I've got a bullish trading plan on it, but it's got to break out of that 780 level. So that's the only thing I like about this is we're below that level. If we move higher, then there's probably a decent likelihood we'll move to the upside. Whether or not we create a long-term trend remains to be seen, but I'm not worried about that right now, especially considering we are short-term traders for the most part. AMLP created a nice little morning doji star, kind of. It's not textbook because we didn't get a gap up this morning, but uh, looks pretty good, relatively speaking. And I'm not even sure. We don't have a sector or subsector. I'm not sure what these guys do. I'm going to guess it's something in oil or, wait, LLP ETF. I'm not even sure what this is. <laughs> this just goes to show. I think you really don't care. Give me a ticker symbol and a chart and I'm good to go. But uh, it's similar. I mean, we've got the same kind of base building activity, you know, where it's up and down, up and down, bouncing off the same levels. We had that break back here when the market crashed, but... Um, it's holding this 12 and a half, 1237 area. It's right at it today. It closed there with a little bit of a morning star. So if it moves higher tomorrow, a decent likelihood it will keep going up. The question is how far and how fast. And obviously we never know that. So Atwood Oceanics. Again, a little tiny bullish engulfing pattern yesterday and then a follow through today. Volume, I, usually on stocks, we get updated volume at this point of the day. We're only an hour away from the end of day update. but um, So the light volume, definitely concerning. But oil and gas company, oil was up about, well, 3%. Up 3% today, so not a tremendous amount, but enough to get people's attention. So, But there was one other gas company, oil company that dropped off. I'm not sure why, but... Um, this one's already outside of the entry point. But with the light volume, not t not terribly excited yet. So if it pulls back and, you know, tests this 15, 15, 15 area, if it gets back in that range and tests it, then then I might be a little more excited about it. Right now, it's, yeah, so. Ben Franklin Resources. Not a huge, we've got about a buck and a half of potential, which on a $42 stock isn't necessarily terribly exciting, but at the same time, We've got a nice little short-term uptrend here. So if it breaks out to the upside, the odds are it's going to have a pretty solid run, at least, you know, looking at some of the previous runs we've had. They're short and fairly sweet. I mean, they're pretty quick, you know, 40, what's this, 39 and a half to 42, basically, in about five days. Kind of what I'm looking for here. Kind of what I'm hoping for is that it breaks out to the upside. Bands are pinching a little bit. So if it breaks out to the upside and goes and the, the market stays bullish, then there may be an opportunity here to, to pull a little chunk out. So... And honestly, I'm not even looking for any kind of home runs right now. I am I'm 
basically just sitting waiting for the little things like this to pop and just taking small bits and pieces right now because the market's just not it's it's just so neutral and it's so I don't know if I want to call it schizophrenic, but it just can't seem to make up its mind. And we had a tough period like this last year. And coming into the holidays and having that time of year, it gets kind of, it, it gets tougher. I mean, it just is. January hits and usually we'll get some good moves. So we'll see. I'm, I'm just, I'm just kind of hanging out on the sidelines, waiting for decent opportunities. And we'll see what, uh, going to just kind of relax most likely for the rest of the year unless something changes, but. Excel is a rollover looking for a break to the downside, you know, big gap to the upside. It's a biotech company, so it very well could stay up here. Um, has yet to break that 538. If it does, there's some decent potential to the downside. If it doesn't, it continues to hold it and starts to bounce here, then this may be one to flip over and look at a bullish play on. HBAN, uh, bearish engulfing pattern a couple days ago. And this morning it gapped up and then rallied, closed right at the the um, close of yesterday, which is more of a, an in the neck or an on the neck. Uh, let's see. At the neck, in the neck, and on the neck. It's at the neck. It's more at the neck, So which the price is basically at, which is a continuation pattern. So you've got the bearish engulfing pattern, and then you've got the basically bearish continuation pattern on the at the neck pattern, which granted is continuation, so usually it's continuing a downward trend. So I'll put a lot of, of emphasis on it, but uh, it is a bearish sign. So we'll see what happens with HP. We'll see what the action looks like tomorrow. And if it gives us an opportunity to get into a bearish trade, then I would be open to that. Uh, Coca-Cola Company. Now, interesting, on the big guys, I recall seeing Coca-Cola Enterprises and also seeing Pepsi. Coke, this is the actual company of Coke. Coca-Cola Enterprises, I believe, was a Coke distributor or the Coke distributor or wholesale. I'm not sure exactly who that was. We'll look when we get to the big guys, but KO is the original Coca-Cola company. And maybe they own the CCE, I think it is, the other ticker symbol, but um, this one's been around, you can see, for a long time. I mean, there's the 1970s. This is this is the Coke Coke company. Uh, but it is making a move to the upside, interestingly enough, you know, having a, a soft drink company and not sure exactly why they're so, looking so bullish right now, other than the fact that they may, um, now I'm just guessing here, but if they're acquiring, and they own a bunch of stuff. I mean, they, they're the big, them and Pepsi are the big 800-pound gorillas, and they're out snatching up monster drinks, and all these energy drinks that come out, the ones that are successful, the big boys come and, and pick them up, essentially. So um, Monster, I believe, has stayed independent. I think they're even publicly traded. But uh, anyway, Snapple, I think Coca-Cola and Snapple. You know, Snapple became big back in the, what, 90s, I think it was. And uh, I'm pretty sure that Coke owns them now. But if it breaks out to the upside, there's a pretty decent chance it'll it'll go for a little bit. There's almost two bucks of potential there. So, And then the last one, Mondelez, bearish engulfing pattern a couple days ago, last Friday. And uh, looking for this to break to the downside and push through that bearish trend. So... Uh, if it doesn't, then we don't have a trade. If it does, awesome. I like the looks of it. We got uh, a little over two bucks of potential there. So now let's shift gears and get over to the big guys. Phenomenal. Got an extra A in there. Uh, yeah, CCE, Coca Cola Enterprises, food, beverage, and tobacco. So I think that's the distribution arm, but I'm not sure. And then PepsiCo, of course. So let's go through these one by one. Aflac uh, gave us a pullback today, gap down, and kind of sort of gave an entry point. The volume is really light, which you know, being a holiday week, the volume is usually light anyway. So it's it's really – that's where it gets hard to read. So hard to say. Amberella still looking for – was looking for a pullback and got it yesterday. Actually got a bearish engulfing pattern. And then a little update today. So that makes that kind of skittish. Not to mention we have earnings coming up here in the next week or two. Uh, AME, Amtech, looking for a bearish swing to the downside. In fact, this is one that this morning you may have gotten um, pulled into, and then it got bullish and turned to the upside. So hopefully not. But uh, a lot of times this is why I like to wait for the close. Are you going to miss some traded opportunities? Yes. But this is one that you would have stayed out of if you were waiting for the close. So... Um, it's it's kind of 50-50. You know, there's no right or wrong answer. 
Sometimes it's better to get in and during the day before the close. Sometimes it's good to get in right at the open, and sometimes it's good to wait for the close. And we need to just never know, really. It's nothing more than essentially an educated guess. So APC hasn't moved the way we wanted it to. Baker Huge, ooh, did take off this morning. Um, geez, ran all the way halfway to the target. So I looked at things first thing this morning for a little bit, and then I had other plans going on during the day. Uh, I looked at things a little bit before the close. So stuff like this, I mean, I personally missed it just because I was busy. And I don't uh, – I no longer freak out and watch things while I'm out and about. If I've got things on and I, I set them up, if I'm not going to be able to watch the market during the day, I set them up if I have trades on. If I don't and I miss something like this, I just it's no big deal to me anymore. I used to get all upset about it and freak out. And be like, oh, I can't believe I missed it. Get, You know what? There's going to be trades tomorrow or the next day that will pop up too. I just shrug it off now. So Cardinal Health uh, tagged the entry point a little bit Monday and then followed through a little bit today. Coke, we kind of looked at that, looking for it to break down, but it has yet to do that. Eaton, I like the looks of this one. Again, light volume. Of course, we're two days from Thanksgiving, so um, to be expected. And that's another reason I'm not excited about jumping on any trades today. It's why I just, you know, I, it's almost like walk. you just walk away for a few days. And um, I've been away from the market for two or three weeks now. So, I mean, not away from it, but just not trading. I'm uh, just waiting for things to materialize. You're looking for better opportunities. So I know some people call me crazy and they think I'm nuts. How can you walk away? I'm, I'm, because I've learned that it's better sometimes just to set it out, just to clear the head, get on the sidelines, just relax and leave the market alone for a little bit. Look at it and peek at it. And if anything really significant pops up, yeah. But otherwise, you know, two weeks from now, the, the opportunities are going to be the same as they are today. So why am I in a rush? And that is really weird to hear me say. Because I am not a very patient person. I've gotten more patient with kids and trading. Those two things have dramatically improved my patience. But it's odd for me to sit there and say, well, in two weeks, because I used to always be in a panic, like, I can't miss today. I don't want to miss today. I don't, I don't want every single day I want to be there. Now it's just like, yeah, no big deal. <laughs> I know, it's just, it's kind of odd. Uh, MJN, Kimberly Clark wasn't doing anything. MGM, um, Gave us a nice little move yesterday, and then today it's it also hit the entry, but we had a little spinning top with some solid volume. So uh, could see a pop back to the upside tomorrow. Pepsi not doing what we had hoped. Procter Gamble, yeah, still sitting there, still waiting for that. Splunk did exactly what we were looking for on Monday, except, well, not really. It gapped down, which isn't what we wanted, and then it rallied back up to that. The Actually, it looks like about the close of Friday, and then turned over. Woulda, shoulda, coulda syndrome says we should have gotten in there. But then today we have a bullish engulfing. So this is what's funny is you sometimes, and this is why I don't kick myself. Because I may have kicked myself for not jumping on it Monday, yesterday. But then today you've got a bullish engulfing pattern. And tomorrow this thing could be up and get back up to the entry point, to the 6014. It could go all the way up and stop you out. And I wouldn't be surprised. And I've seen it hundreds of times. So that's why I don't get upset anymore because I miss trades all the time. I miss trades where I could have made money, but I also miss a lot of opportunities that would have cost me money. And what I learned a long time ago is that, I should say a long time ago, a few years ago, two-thirds into my entire career, that we notice the ones that we miss, and we cry and whine over the spilled milk that we didn't get, but we don't ever notice the ones that we didn't miss, the ones that we chose not to get in for whatever reason, or they moved in a way that didn't make sense to get in, and so we think we missed an opportunity, but then when you go back, you actually would have taken a loss on it if you would have gotten in. So in other words, we don't, in our minds, we don't balance it out. We don't look at both sides. We're completely unobjective as human beings when it comes to the reality of the situation. We may miss an opportunity to make money, but we're also missing opportunities to lose money. And that's very well what this one could be. And to wrap it up for the evening, SRE, beautiful move on Monday, a little gap up and then a tank, recognizing that downtrend line that's there and a gap down this morning, uh, a little bit of a bullish move, bouncing right at 100. I mean, it closed, yeah, it closed down 80 cents, but we closed up 
from the lows quite a bit. We've got that long lower shadow. That's what I'm looking for. That long lower shadow leaves a little bullishness to it. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this take off and run to the upside tomorrow. In fact, that plan may need, considering that the trend line is moving at the pace that it is and it's this far down, it might be wise to move that stop down some to where it's closer to the trend line. Originally had it up above the high of uh, Friday, uh, which made sense, except that now it's so far away from that trend line that I don't know that it makes as much sense. So just a thought. If you want to do that, I'll probably do that, it's depending on what the action looks like tomorrow. If this thing just tanks and goes to 98, then there's no sense because it's over. It's gone. But if it bounces back up tomorrow, then I'll look at adjusting that stop down to probably just above the high of yesterday. So in other words, to about right there. So, so there we have it for today. Updates and little guys and a review of the big guys. So y'all have a great day and uh, I'm going to try to squeeze one in tomorrow. If not, we'll just catch you Friday and uh, hope y'all have a wonderful Thanksgiving if I don't talk to you before then. All right, have a great night. Bye-bye.